really believe that in a developed country like ours, uh, any person who has only standard skills or standardized skills, they can be taught anywhere in the world now, and they can be done a lot more cheaply in low-cost centers. And so people are going to, if they're going to survive in a developed country outside of low-level service work, they're going to have to have innovation and creativity. And so the form of schooling that we engage in that basically privileges people who know a lot of facts but can't solve problems with them uh, is on its last legs. It, it, it will not be economically prosperous form of schooling for us. What's next? Uh, next will be schooling that stresses the ability to solve problems uh, but not just to solve problems, but to be able to do it collaboratively so that you can work in a group where uh, the group is smarter than the smartest person in the group uh, and, uh, and also where you can innovate with the tools you've learned and not just do standard solutions to problems. That, that's where we're going to go, and that's one of the reasons people are interested in video games and related technologies because, again, they put you into worlds where you have to solve problems. I mean, all, all a video game is is problem solving. It's just a series of, if you think about it, in some weird way, a video game is just an assessment. All you do is get assessed every moment as you try to solve a problem, and if you don't solve it, the game says you failed. Try again, and then you solve it, and then you have a boss, which is a test, and you pass the test. I mean, games essentially are a form of assessment, the thing that is probably the most painful, ludicrous part of schooling. Uh, but in a, in a game, it's a lot of fun, right, because it's handled in a very different way. One thing games don't really do is separate learning and assessment. They don't say, learn some stuff and then later we'll take a test. They're giving you feedback all the time about the learning curve that you're on. So they're not the only solution to this problem by any means, but they're part of the solution of getting uh, kids in school to learn not just knowledge as facts, but knowledge as something you produce, and that in modern worlds you produce collaboratively. One of the first games I played was a great game called Deus Ex very complicated game, and like any good baby boomer, I read the game manual. And the game manual is just as technical as a textbook, and I couldn't understand a word of it. Uh, it was boring, uh, it was technical, it had lots of definitions that were cross-referenced other definitions, and I threw it away and said, I don't know, I can't play this game, I can't understand a word of this. And then I decided to do what any kid would have done, is I played the game, right? And after a few, I didn't play it well, but after a few hours, uh, I picked up that little book, that little manual, and everything, and it was completely clear. Why? Because I had seen the reference to every word in it. I had seen what, what it was referring to. I was seeing what it was about. Well, my argument is the same with your chemistry textbook. A chemistry, the words in a chemistry textbook are tied to a game, the game of chemistry, what chemists do when they want to solve a problem. The, t the words are tools for problem solving. They're not just facts to do trivial pursuit with. Uh, and if you played the game of chemistry, you come to understand why people use the words as tools to do things, to engage in actions, and to label images. Now, if you played the game, what you do with the manual is use it as a reference to look up stuff that you need to know to get better or to understand something in the game that you, you don't think you fully understand. And that's the same way a textbook ought to be used. You ought to be using a chemistry textbook when you've already understood there's something you need to know about chemistry. Then you go and use it then proactively. So I, I don't think it's a radical proposal, actually. I think that uh, scientists have always learned the language of science by doing science. Uh, video games just allow kids to do a lot more things, right? Things that would be too expensive to do in the real world or that we can't get everybody to do in the real world.